Hey, welcome back to Dogtography. I thought today we could have some Christmas holiday fun. I have a DIY project that, well, I've never tried before, but I've got all the supplies here to try and recreate an image that I saw on Instagram by my favorite cat Instagrammer called Furry Fritz. Look him up, he does all kinds of hilarious things with his cats and does lots of behind the scenes. So I watched this behind the scenes and I've gone out and collected some supplies. So I thought today I would show you how to recreate this image that you see here. Isn't it amazing? Super cute. Um, with some dollar store um, art, like not art supplies, Christmas supplies, some art supplies. And we're gonna try it with Asher, my dog. And well, I don't know, maybe my cats if we get that far, but I'm not sure if we're going to today because I feel like this is a little ambitious. But anyway, let's get to it. Hi, I'm Andrea Fleury and welcome to Dogtography. My channel is all about how to take better images of your dog and how to create some really super fun memories. I walk you through different tips and tutorials and techniques. I sometimes show you behind the scenes of my professional career as a dog photographer, all while just trying to have some fun and enjoy time with our dog. So I've watched the behind the scenes video of how the photographer created this set. It looks to me like he used a piece of black poster board and cut a hole in it and then used like a pre-made wreath and just stuck it to the board. I wasn't able to find one of those, so I went to the dollar store and bought a whole bunch of ornaments that I'm gonna try and stick directly to the board. But first, to cut a hole for the size of my dog's head, I figured this, this bowl would be great for the cats if I get to the point where I can do one of these for my cats. But I think this, it's not a dinner plate. It's like, what's the size down from a dinner plate called? I don't know, you put your salad on it, or I don't know what it's used for, but this is what I figure is good for the size of my dog's head. Now, what I also wanna mention is that when I look at the example photo, there's not a lot of like, there isn't like a gap that's showing um, between where the dog's head is and where the hole is cut out in the board. So I wanna make sure it is kind of a squeeze to get his head through, so there's not like a big gap, but he's got lots of floof and stuff anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But for your dog, if they don't have a lot of floof, then you wanna make sure that the hole that you're cutting in the board is, is very um, tight, kind of a tight fit for you to get your dog's head through. So there's that. So because I don't have a pre-made wreath, I really zoomed in and had a good look at the wreath that they've used. And it looks to me like there's something like this in the background that the balls are kind of set in. And I think the what is gonna be helpful about this, I hope, is that it kind of fills in the gaps like in between the ornaments and it gives it a bit more sparkle and shine. But I don't really know how like gluing stuff to this is gonna go. Um, so this could just be a big mess, but then we'll just turn this into a fail video. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and then, so I've got my hot glue gun, which I think is definitely the way to go for sticking down these Christmas ornaments and a knife and a pencil and two feline helpers, which I don't know if you can see, but they are inevitably going to be in the way a lot, I think, during this process, right guys? Okay, let's get to it. So I have my poster board, again, from the dollar store. I think what I'm gonna do is try and draw the hole up here. So thinking that this is gonna sit on the ground and my dog is gonna sit behind it and stick his head through, but I don't wanna put it so high where there's not enough like black board at the top. So again, if you look at the sample image, you wanna make sure there's like enough surrounding board around where your hole is gonna go. So again, I'm just, I'm, I always overanalyze these things, but it's what I think is probably gonna work the best. So when I looked at the sample image, the reason why I really liked the wreath is because it has lots of dimension and different shape to it and lots of different colors. It's easy at first glance to think it's just red, but it's more than that. It's got lots of different tones to it and some different varieties of things that are going on within the wreath that gives it like 
detail and dimension. So I've picked out some different sizes. I've got some like what I would consider like medium size and then some small ornaments. And I'm gonna try and like layer it again to give it like a bit of dimension and not just lay them all flat. But I'm not really sure how that's gonna go. So we'll just, we'll just see, we'll wing it, right? I think I'm done. This is the moment of truth to see if anything like falls off. But there it is. Now, if I had to do this again and do it differently, there's like lots of strings of glue, but what I would avoid doing is leaving the like tips of some of the ornaments out. So I've tried to cover them up because again, if I look at the sample photo, there are no like, I don't know what you call those, but like the little hanger things. And what I like about not showing a lot of those is I don't want the silver bits to like catch reflections or cause like strange shiny little things in the images. Um, so if I, if I could do it again, I would make sure to turn all of those in. So if you're doing this yourself, that would be my best advice. But what do you think? Let's give it a shot and try it out. Okay, so welcome to Lightroom on my iPad. I am using uh, the Apple Pencil to help uh, with this edit. That's kind of what I would normally do if I was editing this um, for my own uh, Facebook or Instagram. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of my thought process. So this photo was taken outdoors in natural light in the shade, so I don't have any sun really uh, shining on his face to contend with here. So I'm just tweaking little bits of things. I'm gonna take the highlights down just a little bit. I'm gonna bring the shadows up just a bit, and I'm gonna add in uh, some black to kind of make sure that the black on his nose and around his eyes looks really nice and black. I like that. I'm gonna lift the whites up just to kind of add a little bit of sparkle. So know that when you take an image with your cell phone, if it is uh, not in a raw format, which most of the time cell phones are not taking raw format images, you um, have them set as a JPEG. JPEGs already have added color and saturation put on top of the image that was taken by the camera. It just does that. That is part of what a JPEG uh, does is it already has color correction. So we're kind of going on top of that. I've just enhanced the clarity um, under the effects tab here, which kind of adds some sharpness. And then under the color tab, I brought up the vibrance. I don't ever touch saturation. Um, the temperature here, um, I brought up a tiny bit. Whenever you take a photo in the shade, you wanna make sure that it's not casting blue. Um, so that means you need to add a little bit of yellow to kind of combat the blueness of the shade. Uh, let's go to detail. I'm gonna add some sharpening. I think, woo, yeah, I think that that looks so much better as it is. And I don't think there's anything else needed under that. For optics, I always select the remove CA, which stands for chromatic aberration. I'm not gonna go through what that is right now, but it's kind of just good practice to tick it off. And then lens correction here, you can see what it does uh, when I kind of toggle that back and forth. So any lens that we use when we take an image will add a certain level of distortion to the image. So this tick box here just kind of shows you what it looks like with the um, distortion removed. I actually quite like this distortion. Uh, so I am going to keep that the way it is. Okay, now we need to go into crop, which is this like cool little thing a uh, third from the top. And I know that I wanna make it a square. So there is my one-to-one -one aspect ratio. I'm gonna bring it down so his eyes and his nose are centered within the center square. And I'm looking to see how much wreath is above and below those um, two horizontal lines to make sure that the wreath is like centered in the image as much as I can have it. And then I'm also looking at the sides to see um, how much wreath again is kind of on either side of the vertical lines to make sure that his head is as centered as it can be um, within the frame. 
So now that it's centered and it's cropped, we've got the problem of having like my backyard kind of on the left and the right side of this image. So we're gonna go into um, the healing tools here, which is the fourth one down, which looks like the little band-aid. We're gonna click on this and we're going to go to clone. I'm gonna zoom out, whoa. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on the image so I can see these sizes. I'm going to adjust my brush size and then I'm just going to start doing a very loose job. I'm not going to be very picky with details here. So just create a selection with your brush and then it shows you here where you want to pull the um, pixels from that it's cloning over. So you get to be in control of that and then hit whoops and then hit done when you're done with your selection. I think it's actually just kind of a little bit annoying that I have to hit done all the time. That kind of uh, isn't so fun, but I'm not uh, being really picky here. I'm just kind of going through. You can see that it's kind of sloppy. The gradients don't all match and that's fine because I'm going to fix that later. Um, I'm just wanting to kind of black it all out for now. I'm not so concerned with these little bits because I'm going to fix it all. You will see. Okay, now I'm gonna click on the clone thing again and go to heal and I'm going, whoop, that kind of is a bit of a large brush. I wanna bring that down and I'm gonna go over that again and just kind of start making some selections. If there's anything else, there's nothing else really here that I can see that really needs to be fixed. I might see if I can remove one of those. Yeah, these kind of, these little stars that kind of stick out a bit, they kind of annoy me just a little bit because they're just, you know, not flush with the rest of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not doing a great job, as you can see, of kind of like matching that out. Um, even though I'm like, you can see, right? That it it's not doing a great job. What if we tried clone and just see what happens with clone? Sometimes, there we go. Sometimes it just takes like messing around with it and playing with it and just seeing what happens with these different tools. They're not perfect. They're, they're doing a very, um, they're using like AI to try and match things as best as they can. So, I mean, obviously with a technical type edit, I wouldn't be using my iPad for it. I would be using Photoshop and uh, on my desktop computer. But for the purposes of this, I think it's actually doing a really great job. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I'm, I want to mask this out so I can make the black part of this image super black. So I'm going to go down to mask, which is under the healing, the little band-aid thing. Um, and I'm going to hit the blue plus sign down at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to go to radio gradient, which is going to allow me to draw this circle and put it over top of Asher's face. Now, normally with, the, with this, whatever is in ruby red is what your light adjustments are going to correct. So I don't want to correct Asher, Asher's face. I want the invert, which is uh, correcting the black um, around the circle of Asher's face. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to tap on the mask itself and up will come this menu. You want to select invert mask one, which is going to get you that. Now I can still see in the ruby red is the wreath and some of Asher's ears. And I want to make sure that he is not touched by this. So now I'm going to hit the little minus sign down here by the mask and I'm going to hit subtract from mask one and then I'm going to tap on select subject. So again, using AI, it, oh, look at that. It was just so amazing how well this software works. Um, so it selected Asher and the whole wreath. So I'm going to tap back on my mask again here. And then now I'm going up to light this. I'm now going to pull down the exposure a little bit to kind of add some of that darkness. Now, if I took it all the way down, it's going to completely remove any of the information in those pixels. It's just blown out now completely. There's no detail. I don't like the look of this. I feel like his head looks like it's floating in this wreath on nothing. I just don't like that look. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to add a little bit of black and I think that that looks really good. 
Um, but I do still see the gradient from lightness at the top to darkness in the bottom. And that's happening because the daylight, which is essentially the whole sky at this point, is illuminating the top part of the image. So to bring that down a bit, I'm gonna hit on the blue plus sign again and select linear gradient. I'm gonna make my picture a little smaller so you can see this and I'm gonna draw it down. Now it, you can see how this gradient effect goes from lighter at the bottom um, to darker or thicker, uh, more opacity at the top. So I want to now again, remove Asher's head out of this because I don't want that to apply to um, his face. So I'm gonna hit the minus sign and then subtract from the mask and then select subject and it should detect. Yes, it did. Perfect. It's not always perfect. So it's just good to double check it. Um, now I'm gonna bring down the exposure. So I want to try and match now the top part of the screen with the bottom part of the screen, like the blackness I'm referring to. I'm gonna take the black down a little bit and there you go. I think that that is pretty good. I can still see some of the texture from the board. It had some like sparkles on it. I am fine with that. So I am gonna hit done and voila. This is the final edited image. Now, if you wanna go in, which you should always do and do fine details, can you see what is going on here? This, look at this eye booger situation. So let's try healing. We're gonna bring the brush size down. I'm gonna do that and let's find where it looks good. Yes, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna do that one. And you should always, always spend the time to kind of refine these little details. It is what makes the images stand out and be different from everyone else who's creating content out there. Um, if you spend a little bit of time going over some of these finer details, it just looks like super sharp and super clean. So good, I'm good with that. And voila, your final edited image. Lightroom on my iPad. Well, there you have it. I consider that to be a big success. What do you think, Asher? You just never know when you start getting into projects like this, if they're gonna actually get created the way you think you wanna create them, and if your dog is gonna enjoy them and participate with the prop. But I encourage all of you to go and try something fun this Christmas with your dog, set up a cute little photo op, recreate something you see on Pinterest, get inspired, take this idea and do something different. Tag me at dogtography.ca so I can like and share it. So go out, make some memories with your dog, have some fun and uh, happy holidays.